Hello everybody and welcome to the Deep Astronomy Review of a brand new telescope for amateur astronomers that was released by Veillonis, a French company that has done something remarkable with the Stellina telescope. They've created a fully automated, self-contained optical system that is actually quite unlike anything I've ever seen before. This telescope is a real paradigm shift for amateur astronomy. Never before has getting into the hobby been easier. Now, Bayona sent me this unit to play with for a few weeks, and I've spent a lot of time with it. And to be blunt, this is the funnest telescope I've ever used. I actually want to take this telescope outside and see stuff with it. Now, in this video, I'm going to give you my thoughts and experiences with the scope, but it's so easy to use, I'm not going to go into huge detail on how to use it and stuff like that, because, well, I actually don't have to. <laughs> it's really plug-and-play simple. So to use it, all you have to do is level the tripod, turn it on, and connect the telescope via the Stellina app for your smartphone. And that's literally all you got to do to get start using it. It's actually that simple. There's nothing else. <laughs> but if you want more examples and a little more detail of some of the complete descriptions of what this telescope is, like its weight and size, then please watch the video that Galactic Hunters made on Stellina. They've done an outstanding job introducing the Stellina telescope, so I'm going to give you a different perspective here in this video. So a link to that video is in the description box, and that's also a channel well worth subbing to if you think you're going to get into astroimaging in a big way. So check out Galactic Hunters. So the first thing I noticed when I got this scope was that there's no eyepiece. I mean, this is strictly an imaging telescope, which, depending on your outlook, is either a good or a bad thing. I put the battery in and downloaded the app from the Google Play Store and turned it on. And that was it. The startup process boots up the telescope and starts a Wi-Fi hotspot that you'll connect to with your phone. And the only tricky thing about this scope is, and you have to remember, is that when you're connecting to the Wi-Fi on, on the Stellina itself, turn off your data connection to your cell phone provider because otherwise the phone won't fully connect. I had to turn that off before I could get full control of the telescope. So just remember to do that. Now, you won't be able to surf the web from the telescope's hotspot. All you can do is connect to it with your smartphone so that you can control it and get the images that it takes. All right, so with those preliminaries out of the way, which I did indoors, I just turned it on and got it set up to make sure I could use it, I was ready then to go outside. And here is how I used the scope. I just put it on the tailgate of my truck. It was easy, and the tailgate is at a comfortable height that I could use it, and it allowed me, I could just drive anywhere I wanted to go and set up really fast. And man, is this scope easy to use. I'm not overstating it when I say that this telescope is the easiest and most foolproof telescope I've ever used. Ever. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Any night I wanted to go out, all I had to do was grab it, and in less than 10 minutes, I was imaging something. And what a satisfying experience that was, because anyone who owns a large, heavy, complicated telescope system will tell you that deciding whether you want to schlep all of that stuff outside polar align it, boot up the computers and cameras and grab eyepieces and all of that jazz. Well, it's not always so easy. It's not always an easy decision to make. Sometimes you just end up saying, you know, well, maybe I'll just stay inside tonight. <laughs> so unless you have a permanent setup where you can just go outside and turn things on and maybe open up a, a window or two here, you're not always keen on getting all that gear out on a cold night. And I promise you, you won't do that with this scope. Ten minutes from decision to imaging will make all the difference in deciding whether or not you want to go out under the stars. So here are some of the specs. This is an F5 system that is a composite refractor-reflector design that has a Naismith focus, meaning that the image plane comes out of the side of the optical tube. The objective lens here is an apochromatic ED doublet made from lanthium glass, and it has anti-reflection coatings on it. The camera is based on a 6.4 megapixel Sony CMOS chip that has 3096 by 2080 pixels, and because it's sitting on an Altaz mount, it has an optical field derotator built in. And since I live in Florida, one thing I appreciated was that it also has a built-in dew control heater, which is important for humid environments. So basically, this thing has everything you're going to need to get started imaging objects in space. You won't need to buy anything else. Actually, though, <laughs> now that I think about it, I don't think you can buy anything else for it. I mean, where are you going to put the accessories? <laughs> so you don't have to worry about any of that. 
but they did a really good job thinking of everything, at least as far as I'm concerned. But even with all of that sophisticated mechanical, electronic, and optical components, what really sets this telescope apart, in my opinion, is the onboard control and imaging software. The software is the hidden treasure here. What advanced imagers learned the hard way is that taking a good image is very tricky. You have to have good alignment with a, in, you have to have good alignment with the sky, great focus, and your processing after the fact needs to be great before you get an image that even looks halfway decent. So all of that really tricky stuff is dealt with in Stellina. After it boots up and starts the Wi-Fi network, it begins a series of tasks that are not trivial, but it kind of seems that way because of how they've implemented it. It looks up and immediately starts focusing by implementing an onboard focusing routine. Then it does a plate solution to figure out where it is on Earth and where it's looking at the sky. And it also has an onboard GPS to make that happen. And this takes, I don't know, several minutes to complete. But that simplicity belies a lot of hard work in software control and design that I don't think beginners can really can fully appreciate. This little telescope has the same sophistication in software that you would only find in professional observatories. Now I know this because I've actually written that code in my previous life for professional observatories, and it's one of the things that impressed me the most with Stellina. This is a complete remote observing unit where you don't need to touch it once it gets started. And I just want to take a minute and reiterate this for a second, because I, as I said, I've spent my career writing code that controls cameras, controls telescopes, processes images, and, and downloads and archives images, and in, ingests uh, data into database, all of this stuff I've done. And I can tell you that what they've implemented here in Stellina is actually quite sophisticated. And I find it very impressive. And this is coming from someone who spent a career writing code for professional observatories. So this is definitely amazing. And that amazed me more than all of the bells and whistles and even the optics. Because as a software engineer, I, I can come at this in a different angle and appreciate what's underneath the hood. Okay, so now the telescope has found where it is, it it's knows where in the sky it's looking, and now we're finally start ready to look at stuff. And the app is where you will search for what's up right now, and it gives, you an est it gives you a list of things that are up, and an estimate of how long you should observe to get a decent image. Now, I picked several of my favorites, starting with the M57, the Ring Nebula, because it was getting ready to set, and I wanted to get an image of it. And this is where my jaw started dropping. What happens after you tell Stellina to look at something is revolutionary, and it's why I think this telescope is a game changer. It slews to the object, focuses for a bit more, and then begins to take a series of images that will appear on your cell phone. Now, for most objects I looked at with Stellina, it took between 8 and 10, 15 second exposures and started adding them all up together as it went on. Now this is something that professional astronomers and imagers, amateur imagers, do routinely. They make a bright image of a dim object, like a galaxy or nebula, by adding together successive short exposure images. What this does is it increases signal and reduces noise. And what you get is a remarkably detailed image that is made from a whole lot of shorter exposure images. Using the app, you can scroll through the stack of images that's been taken as it goes along. So as the night progresses, you can go through each one. Each image in the stack is exposed, dark, dark subtracted, and enhanced, and then it's added to the stack. <laughs> and I gotta tell you, this is where they've hidden another really advanced feature in the software. Over the course of the 20 minutes or so that I was imaging the Ring Nebula, clouds would periodically cover the object. Those frames never made it into the final image though, which tells me that there is an algorithm in there running that gives the software an idea of the image quality, and it throws out the bad ones. If that weren't happening, then one cloudy frame added to the stack would ruin the whole image. So, as a software engineer, I'd love to see that algorithm because it did a really good job, I felt. And this was rivaling what I've seen in professional data pipelines. Now, I also took some images of the Andromeda Galaxy and the Orion Nebula. I mean, here's also my image of the double cluster in Perseus and a quick shot of the moon. Not quite sure why it's green. And finally, the time I had with the scope saw a lot of cloudy nights, but I managed this really cool image of the Crab Nebula. Now, this image may not look like much, but this is the image that brings me to say why I think this telescope may be the future of amateur astronomy but it isn't necessarily the future of astrophotography. So let me explain. 
Now, many of you that are advanced astro imagers have already expressed the opinion that you can get a, you can get way better setups for uh, for imaging than what this tells for what this telescope costs you, and that it will never replace a truly dedicated system designed for taking high resolution, long exposure astrophotos. And I see your point, but I would argue with some of the details here. I mean, granted, at $4,000, this thing ain't cheap, but it is comparable to what you'd spend on high quality on a high quality imaging station that would include a 6 megapixel chip, field D rotator, lens do control system, control and processing software, and all the other stuff that Stellina has right out of the box. So by the time you spend money on all that stuff, you're still looking at a similar price point, although you might get a maybe a 102 millimeter objective and a better mount, maybe. Like I said, I'll argue with some of the details. But I'll concede that point for a moment and just say that this telescope may not be the future of astrophotography. Okay, I'll give you that. But it most definitely is the future of observing. If I were manufacturers of eyepieces right now, I'd be a little worried about the Selena. I mean, I love you guys, Teleview, I really do. But there are storms on the horizon here. Now, why do I say that? Well, everyone knows we're losing our night skies. They are dying a slow death. Very few people have ever seen the Milky Way, much less a planet or the Andromeda galaxy on a clear, dark night. And, then, and way too many people can't even see all the stars in the Big Dipper. So things are changing. And I predict that in most places of the world, visual observing through an eyepiece will be a dead hobby in my lifetime. And... I'm old. So I say what this telescope represents is the future of visual astronomy. With our disappearing night sky and a lack of good observing sights, this telescope is the replacement of the eyepiece. And I say this with a heavy heart because I am a visual astronomer by nature. I love looking through an eyepiece. But even during the best of times, with dark skies and no moon, all I ever really saw were colorful smudges at best and faint, incoherent smudges at worst. And try as I might, throughout my whole life of living, I never saw the Crab Nebula anywhere near like this through an eyepiece. To get even a small hint of color from an eyepiece on this object, I'd need a 20-inch scope minimum, pre preferably a 30-inch or larger. And, well, that's just not practical, practical for casual amateurs. So here, with an 80-millimeter scope and 10 minutes of my time under light-polluted, partly cloudy skies, I can see this? I'm sorry, but nothing in my years of observing using an eyepiece have I ever seen anything as exciting. This image was taken almost directly under a streetlight on my property, and there were clouds all over the place. And after about 30 minutes of trying to get this image, I just stopped it because it was going to start raining soon. And that's another thing. This has a, a rain sensor that will close it if it starts raining and you're not around. That's pretty nice. So no, this probably won't replace serious astrophotography, but I gotta say, <laughs> it's gonna come close. These images are pretty damn good. And if you get one of these scopes and decide to get serious later, you can attach a thumb drive to the USB port that's inside here, and you can save the raw FITS images yourself for further processing or analysis or whatever you're doing, if you're doing science with it, for example. So you have that option as well. And here's another part of the hobby that will be forever changed by this telescope, star parties. Stellina will connect with up to 20 other smartphones with the Stellan app, which means that a large group can get the images themselves on their phones as they're being taken to do with whatever they want. Star parties will never be the same again. Imagine watching an ever-brightening Orion Nebula appear on your smartphone, full of color and detail, and all the while sharing it with 20 other people all looking at the same thing. That is a unique experience in amateur astronomy and may very well bring an end to the Knights of the Eyepiece while heralding in a new era of high detail casual observing behind the small high resolution screen of a smartphone. Now remember, this is coming from a guy who spent his life sitting behind $1,500 eyepieces and staring directly at objects whose photons were falling directly on my retina. 
I've always cherished that feeling of a direct connection with the cosmos. But I'm a realist, and I know those times are fading away, literally, with the onslaught of light pollution. This telescope, the Stellina, is poised to take that place of the eyepiece and improve on it. I was really surprised at how thrilled I was as the image progressed through the night. It just kept building up and getting better, especially objects that have always been challenging to see in an eyepiece like the Crab Nebula. I was just as excited seeing the image build up on my phone as I was looking through the eyepiece. Actually, <laughs> I was a little more so because of the detail that I could see with so little effort. Sharing to social media is a given in this day and age, and of course, it's trivial to do that when the images start out on your, on your phone. Now, for reasons I've never understood, some harumphing seasoned amateurs think of what Stalina does here as cheating. But seriously, I mean, really? Okay, boomer. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. I'm a boomer. Okay, me. But in my defense, though, <laughs> I'm on the tail end of the boomer era. I'm barely a boomer. But okay, me. This scope is a real advance for amateur astronomy, in my opinion. It's as big a leap as the arrival of the schmidt cassegrain in the 1970s and the Dobsonian in the 80s. Beginners won't get the amazing results that seasoned amateurs get, but it gets them in the door really fast and in a way that keeps people interested and who've never used a scope before, they stay engaged in the hobby. And if there's anything bad to say about this scope, it's the price. $4,000 is a lot of money. And while an argument can be made that most hobbies have a price point like this, I mean, I'm thinking, for example, motorcycling, if you want to be, some people spend 4000 on a bike, bicycling, uh, photography, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> it's still a lot to ask a beginner to spend. And I would say, though, that while many beginners buy a smaller, cheaper scope that's harder to use and they don't go out with it as much, this scope you will use. I promise. It's easy, fun, and capable of growing in, into advanced uses as your skills grow. One other small problem I see with this scope, but it isn't that huge, is that you can't add any filters. While the onboard processing does an excellent job of getting rid of sky background noise, to get the most from a telescope under lights and light pollution like this one's designed to do, adding filters would be a nice-to-have feature. But that's not enough for me to say don't get it. Still does a great job. If you live under streetlights and have always wished you could see the beauty and wonder that's up there over our heads, deep in the universe, then the Stellina Telescope will open that door to you, even if you live directly under streetlights. It's one of the best weapons that fight against the loss of one of our most precious treasures, a dark night sky full of stars. While dark skies may be forever lost to the majority of us who don't live under them, we now have a tool that can pierce the curtain of light pollution and show us what lies behind. I want to thank Veonis for sending me this Stellina to play with. I promise that one day <laughs> I'll send it back. <laughs> Just kidding. You'll get it by June, I promise. <laughs> yeah. I will send it back. I promise. I will. <laughs> Now, if you want to support Deep Astronomy content like this, please consider clicking on the link in the description box below. It is an affiliate link to OPT Telescopes, to this thing here. And anything you buy there benefits Deep Astronomy and it allows me to continue making content. And thanks to all of you for watching. And as always, keep looking up.